All right, we're good to go. Okay. Well, welcome everybody to our coaching session for April 29th. Uh, obviously, we're competing with some amazing weather today. So we got sunshine outside and we're going to bring the sunshine into our Zoom meeting today too. So we'll thank our maker for realizing that we really needed a day like this, right? We really needed it. So it's going to lift our spirits and uh, fuel us for all the things that we need to get done. So welcome to coaching. So today, uh, guys, grab your chat and we'll uh, have you weigh in. I've got a few questions I'm going to hit everybody with real quickly. So make sure you're ready to go with those answers when I ask uh, these questions. Uh, we're going to talk about being better at presenting using Zoom today. Um, and so let me start off with uh, giving you a couple of things to, that we need to do on setting up. And, and Joe, feel free to weigh in. But so Joe, um, if you guys can see my setup here. Um, my laptop is sitting up on a stand. And so the, the camera is, is hitting now more at eye level. And uh, it, it's working a little better for presenting this way because I can look at you easily in the camera. Uh, to my right is another screen in which I can keep chats and other things going. So I think as you're looking at your hardware needs, uh, as you're moving forward using more, uh, you know, presenting through Zoom, that you might want to look at, at how your setup is. And so it's very easy for you to use, you know, say, you know, a large keyboard and your touchpad is here and you're all ready to go. So you can move quickly through programs. So maybe that's the quick tip on, on uh, what's going on. And maybe you've seen the evolution of these Zoom meetings as uh, we're starting to um, make you know, improvements to our, our setups. So, uh, so if improving our Zoom um, presentation skills today, uh, we're gonna get, I'm gonna give you my top kind of three things to do. Last week, we, we hope that you have an active account that you own. So this is a paid for account. Um, I'm going to, let's do a couple of things. Active paid for Zoom account. Go ahead and give me the thumbs up. Active paid for Zoom account. And then I'm just going to scroll through. Okay. So. something that it's, it's really nice when you're the presenter to see the inner, you know, the interaction. And I think that's why we get the thumbs up and the clap because the presenter really needs to hear something, you know, and I think that's what we miss from our live meetings. So maybe that's a tip on how to be a good presenter. Okay. So, um, Joe, I'm going to go ahead and do that, um, poll, um, again, so how many of you have your own zoom account? I'm launching the poll. Um, Go ahead and answer that. And this will give, I'll, I'll give you the numbers, guys. I know we did this last week, but we'll see how we improved. There are uh, 66 of us on the call. And right now I'm getting 36, 37 uh, are, do have an account that's 73% and 27% do not yet have an account. So make that your goal if, you're, if you don't yet have an account to have your own paid for account uh, referred to last week's uh, recorded Zoom meeting, which will have some quick tips for Joe on how to get your own account. Well, we're going to go ahead and mute all. We have some uh, uh, phantom audio here. So I'm going to mute yeah, okay. everybody and then uh, we'll go ahead and bring it on back. Maybe it was Bonnie's cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then to the point, there's a, okay. lot of, there's, there's a lot of comments in the chat. People are, are, are like saying, oh, I messed up. I got a free one. There's nothing wrong with having the free one at all. There are limitations that come along with having a free one, right? Uh, for example, you, can li you only limit the number of participants uh, in the meeting, which is not a problem for us because I think the free one lets you do 100. 
But the biggest, well, the biggest issue is you don't have the additional security measures and you only get 40 minutes at a time. So if your meeting uh, that you host with the free one goes past 40 minutes, it just cuts off. And then you got to send it to the clients again and say, oh, sorry, let's do this, whatever. So again, there's nothing wrong with the free version, but there are limitations with the free, free version. So, I mean, simple opinion, Joe, we, we should all have our paid accounts, right? I, I mean, it just, it seems like for 15 bucks, it's just a no brainer. I'd say give up a couple of trips to Starbucks and uh, yeah, have a paid Zoom account, just a little more professional. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dang it, there goes Starbucks, okay. It's always- Will, so Will hasn't had a Frappuccino, that's why he's so casual about Starbucks. We're, we're gonna get Will- we're gonna I don't get really- Will, We're gonna get Will a milk-based uh, caramel Frappuccino. We'll see how casual he is about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Thanks. Another another addiction that I need. Yeah, a Red Bull one. Okay. There you go. Okay. So um, I've got some more ideas about that, uh, but I want to kind of save some of the dis Zoom discussion for just, I want to get a running start at, at some of these things. So um, let's, let's take a step back and let me, uh, guys, go ahead and again, grab your chat. Uh, last week, I've been taking some interesting information from you guys uh, as you're teaching all of us. Uh, I asked the question of, can you give me something that's really going well? You know, so it's amazingly well. And last week, it was kind of general. So could you tell me something more about business? And I, I want to, I'm keeping and saving this data. So will you go ahead in the chat and, and write the answer to what you think is going really well right now in business. So something to do with your business. What's going really well? Go ahead and type it in. And we'll try to read. I mean, I'm, you know, there's, there's, there's 70 of us now on the call, so probably won't be able to read all of them. But um, I have a plan. I've been really busy. Uh, website, okay. Um, team virtual meetings. Thanks, Jill. So that seems to be going well. Uh, people are more open-minded about how they're working, uh, willing to work with me. Okay, great. Showings on new listings. That's going really well. You know, Allison, I'm going to talk a little bit today about the, the balance between uh, uh, well, what drives appreciation and understanding the market a little bit? I might come back to that a little bit. Uh, Peg, not much, but lenders are responding quickly. That's great. Uh, getting transactions closed. A lot more to learn. I'm busier than ever. I'm hearing a lot about um, uh, how busy that we, we are. And I think that's a testament to you guys being self-driven, self-motivated, good entrepreneurs, and getting your routines down setting your daily priorities. If you're feeling really busy, I think that's a good sign. Um, I, would, I would just channel maybe some of Matt Townsend, who's a kind of a popular, funny uh, psychiatrist. Um, make sure that you do find, um, he does use the word balance. And uh, so, you know, make sure that you, you spend time in compartments of your life that need, need that. And uh, some people are working all day and feel like they just work all day and, and don't get outside and don't exercise and they're missing some other moments. So might want to be careful about that. But uh, I, I attribute to, look, if you're feeling busy, that's usually a good sign uh, most often. Um, thank you guys for the comments. So, so what we do with these Zoom calls is when they're after they're recorded, I get a list of all the responses. So I've been saving those and, and I'm, I'm going to put together in a future coaching session, some of the best uh, responses that, that uh, we're gathering through this. So thank you for your input, everybody. I think uh, this is also a great reminder about staying positive about the things that are going well, because so many things are really going well right now. Um, okay, so let's refer to, um, I put together Oh, let's do um, another poll, but this time I want, your, I want you to do the reactions. How many of you were able to watch the YouTube, uh, the Master Procrastinator uh, TED Talk, or the How to Multiply Your Time? Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you were able to do that. Nobody? 
One, two, Doug, Annie, Cindy, Peg did, okay. Melinda, Laura, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're all, per I was, I was going to get to that, Will. I, I mean, wow. I, you know, a procrastinate, I, mm, someday, maybe, I think, maybe. So, um, <laughs> well, look, I'll tell you this. I, I listened to it again this morning. It, it's, 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 it's what, 14 minutes, you guys? It's, it's really funny. I mean, the guy kind of pokes fun at how we are. Uh, Rachel, you're saying you did. That's great. Uh, Judy's made it's better now uh, than in the past. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, good one, Rich. Um, okay, so let me pull this up. Hold on a sec, guys. Let me grab. Uh, okay, got, okay, here we go. Um, and let me share screen. Consuming positive con uh, content. These were my two favorite TED Talks. Well, well, I mean, I don't know if they're my number one and two. I, but um, so remember these, he, he mentions this rational decision maker as a personality. And, and, and ideally, we would always have the rational pers uh, decision maker at the helm, you know, driving the boat. Um, but that doesn't happen because of the panic monkey. So, you know, there, there, it's really a funny uh, TED talk. And then there's the instant, uh, well, actually, I think I have these backwards, don't I? Let me change these. It's, uh, it goes in this order. Yeah, I think it looks more like this. Yeah, the instant gratification monkey is what's driving procrastination. And then the panic monkey is the one that gets us back in line. That's usually because of a deadline. Uh, he did mention that there, if there were no deadlines. Now, since there was just a few of you that watched it, uh, it was kind of towards the end of this pod, of, of this TED Talk. Um, what did he suggest that we look at? Does anyone remember? And I'm looking at my, uh, at my chat. If you do know, I could probably unmute you. You could talk. Look at our activities. And Cindy, he, he put a visual up. Do you remember what it was? You guys remember what it was? A picture of you? Uh, it wasn't a picture of me. I'm. How do you get, why? Um, Patrick, explain. <laughs> I see you smiling. Try un here, can I unmute you or no? No one unmute you? Go ahead, Patrick. Oh, that was an accident. Okay. <laughs> I was actually. <laughs> Do you remember what he was pointing to? Does anyone remember? Well, there, um, so he actually put up a calendar of every, like an image of a day of every person's life. And then the idea being like, like how much have you lived and how much you have left and what you would really do, you know, with your time. Because uh, I think he, he points out that it's the unpursued um, aspirations that never really have a deadline to them that uh, can just sap happiness from, from folks. And so, you know, we have a lot of time for reflection right now and what you want out of your career and why you're driven and, and what makes you happy. And this is a great time to re-inventory all of those things and start putting in motion what's driving you. Um, one of the podcasts I listened to this morning was testing the theories of happiness and when we're driving towards things that we want and we like that do good for others, it, it always translates into happiness. Here was another point. I, if, if you guys were in a live class, I'd say, write this down, right? So here, I'm just going to type it out, okay? So this is what I would, um, this is what I'd have you write down. This, uh, this particular therapist said happiness 
um, is when you use your gifts. Uh, 10, uh, he said 10 times a day. So, um, so then it posed the question, well, uh, so what are my, what are my gifts? And so you think about, well, I'm, I'm, maybe you could say, well, I'm kind. So if I was kind to say, um, 10 people in a day, then I've got happiness. And that is um, kind of what they were suggesting. Um, I, I wonder if today we could take time to inventory what our gifts are and if we're utilizing them to help somebody else. And that would lift our spirits today. So there's my bread for the head. If you haven't watched the, the uh, procrastinator stuff, watch that today. It, it, they're, the, it's not hard to watch. They're, they're easy so, uh, and, and funny. Okay, uh, I'm gonna switch gears, you guys. And I wanted to give you, again, see this is all kind of like routine stuff. As you start to look at how I approach every day, uh, I think I, I, you know, I exercise, try to eat right. Um, lowering anxiety is usually done by the things I talked about in sales make, so I'm not gonna go over that. Here's my mental uh, bread for the head. And then I always go into studying the market. So um, I know we've been almost inundated with statistics and graphs and things like that. Uh, but if you'll take time to say the market every morning, which is changing so quickly, it's gonna give you more confidence to talk about it. So I'm gonna pose a question to everybody as kind of maybe some homework to do. Would you explain to a buy, how would you explain to a buyer or seller what is driving appreciation? So there's been a debate right now about whether appreciation will maintain its rates, whether it was so flat, whether it will recess. Um, and do you understand the balance between buyer demand and available inventory? So if we could look at pending rates versus listing rates and the ratio between under contracts and listing inventory, then we might be able to answer this question about what's driving appreciation. And on a very high, I would say Berkshire Hathaway-esque level, where you're, you're coming at this not just, well, the market's good, <clears throat> or inventory's flat, you're, you can go a little deeper about explaining why this matters. Uh, when buyers make offers, and, and, and they're tempted to make lowball offers because of some degree of uncertainty, uh, and yet we have low, uh, inventory in, in many of our markets, which is uh, thwarting any of the traditional uh, theories between uh, appreciation and pricing, right? So, so take a look at that, guys. Maybe that would be something that you could, you could do today. Uh, also, you're practicing uh, a new skill, and so I'm going to skip over that, and we're going to go right to uh, Zoom in a minute, because uh, that would be our skill today. Um, let me mute, uh, okay, Any, yeah, okay, I think we got rid of the background noise. Um, okay, so in prospecting, here's a, a three-point checklist, guys, for your business. Um, if, you're, if you need to say, hey, well, what could I be doing right now uh, with maybe some more flexible time? Uh, number one, organize and update your database, and if you were taking notes here, I'm just gonna add to the end of this, whoops, um, Sorry, get my screen back here. My cursor in the right place. Work towards getting a full uh, data set. That means cell, cell numbers, um, you know, of course, addresses because we want to send, you know, print pieces. Um, and so, you know, email, obviously, as well. So if you've got those, then that's a pretty good data set. And that will allow us to uh, send a variety of different mediums in our marketing. Uh, you should be at, uh, blocking out two hours a day for the how are you calls. It's never been easier. Here, let me, uh, I'm just going to come back in a sec because I, I want you to see my face. <laughs> it's never been easier than right now to make these calls. Never. There's no script. It's just how you, how's your family? How's your work affected? You know, you could talk. Remember the, um, remember the Ford approach? Matter of fact, if you remember what the Ford stands for, write it in your chat. Remember the, when, you're, when you're approaching a conversation with somebody, do you remember what it was? Anybody know? 
Let's see who's who remembers. Yeah, Cindy, good reminder for the stay in touch. Thank you. Yeah, so family, uh, recreation, occupation, dreams. Perfect, Caitlin. Yes. So, so if you just took that structure, how is your family? How much of your recreation got canceled? <laughs> right? How's work going? What do you hope to do this year? What a great conversation. End of discussion. Real estate will come up if it needs to come up. Right? Okay. So let me go back to the... Um, Back to the list, guys. And then we'll translate, then we'll transition into the Zoom discussion. So, okay, so there's my two hour, uh, my two hour time block uh, for the how are you calls. Um, and then this is also a time to Cindy's point to look and improve our digital marketing campaigns um, and work on that. And the, I'll, well, you know what, there'd be other classes for that. So I would encourage you to look at your digital marketing camp campaigns. Okay, and that's, so I'll just put on here, you know, that's, that's not just uh, email, um, but that's also our social media, whoop, social media, et cetera, okay. Okay, um, now, um, in your chat, well, here, actually, let's, before I go to the Zoom stuff, let me go ahead and get another poll. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Go down to your, um, your reactions tab. Give me a thumbs up if you've already, okay, let me phrase it right so we get the right poll. If you have either given, uh, okay, no, I don't want to know that. I want to know if you've practiced. So did you practice with a buddy your Zoom presentation skills. Give me a thumbs up if you have. Let me do a quick count. Okay, looks like about a third of each, no, maybe not quite a third of each page. Uh, actually, a third of the front page and then not very many going on. Okay. So, um, guys, take a look at who's around you right now or reach out, text, email. Um, Go ahead and, and uh, get a buddy to practice with because I'm going to show you a couple things now that um, I think are really important. Um, and we're going to approach this one first as a buyer. So back to share. Here we go. Okay. So here are the notes and then we're going to practice doing this. Now that you own your own account, you need to organize your samples. And down here, uh, hey, um, hey, Joe, or anybody who could unmute quickly and just confirm something. Sure, what do you need? Can you see the bottom of my screen here that I, my cursor's going over? Yeah, all 95 uh, things you have minimized. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can see them. I, I don't know how you can see them, but yeah, we can all see them. Okay, great. So what I have here in my doc, uh, is the things I've already got teed up and ready to present. So for example, if we want, if we had a little more participation in the, um, in the uh, procrastination uh, TED talk, I probably would have dove a little deeper into that one and it's ready to go. Um, so think about this from a buyer standpoint and what kinds of things you want to have ready. My first, uh, you know, emphasis here is don't forget property. So, um, and I suspect that our Park City agents are a lot better at this because many times they've had to present things over uh, technology because the buyer is not in the state. But for everybody else who's never done this, don't forget to focus on property. So here you're seeing the MLS screen. And I just pulled up some, some properties that kind of fit a, a criteria that I might be interested in. Uh, and, and frankly, there's just not a lot out there, um, which, okay. So, but let's, if I'm pointing to something that I want to draw attention to, to a buyer, I certainly uh, would want to spend time walking them through this property and say, you know, either I've been there or I haven't, I would, I would want to show them where it is and give, you know, look, you're the expert of the area. So you can say, now remember, 
you know, this is in the Draper area. This is East Draper. It's up against the mountain. I could also translate this uh, to satellite and say, see, there's the mountain. So guys, if we're not, if we're skipping over the property, we're, for, we're that's like forgetting the whole product, you know? So I would say that we should spend, practice doing what I'm doing now with somebody else, okay? So, um, and then of course they have chances to ask questions and you can go from there. You can say, look, we pulled some larger acreage. This is a newer property. There's the six, look, don't assume they know where all these things are, right? You, you have gotten familiar with this layout. So I think you're gonna have to say, look, you, you mentioned square footage was an issue or you wanted more garage space or you wanted to be in this area. So, so start from there and make sure you can show them properties well. Hey, Will, may I make a yes. comment about that? Yes, vote garage, Jill, yes. Yeah, so um, when, I, when I was uh, introduced to the real estate industry um, via Will Cooper, by the way, um, about a little over three years ago, one of the first things I did was try to understand what the MLS uh, layout was. And from somebody who comes from a fairly technical background and has seen a lot of information like this, th this was one of the more confusing things to me. I thought the layout was horrible. I, I thought the grid didn't make any sense. I didn't, I didn't understand why it was spread out over the course of that uh, hot sheet. Um, I didn't understand why it wasn't just a clean explanation of what the, where the home was and where it is. And so from, from my perspective, this was a very difficult thing for me. And maybe it just as a reminder, if you're showing this to a potential buyer for the first time, as Will's pointing out, that's a very confusing visual. It's not a very clean understanding visual to someone who has no idea what the real estate industry is all about. So I think to your point, Will, the idea is really make sure that when you're walking somebody through it, explaining where those things are and what they mean. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Joe. Um, and, and I think that we often, um, I mean, this is our Achilles heel as agents. Um, we often say things are no big deal or that's easy or simple. And we just step over, you know, what we think is common understanding with everybody else. So, so look, I, that's the first tip. Spend a lot of time on what they want and what they're looking for. And as questions come up, then you can start looking in other ways to answer questions. So for example, now we talked about this. So guys, now I have in my doc here, um, I have dot loop. So where, why am I gonna use dot loop as a tool in presenting? because it has my forms. So first you've got to come up here and create kind of your presentation loop. So when you go into, uh, so look, this isn't, a, this isn't a dot loop class. So create your training, uh, or I'm sorry, your presentation loop, and then you'll need to add forms to it. Um, so um, for example, I did add a closing cost addendum here. Let's say that it's going to be something like subject to. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to our, uh, let's, okay. I'm going to pull up our library and then I'm going to search for how about a subject to? Okay, subject to seller buyer's residence. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna copy it, and it's gonna go over, I hit okay, and now I have it right here. So now when a buyer asks a question, right, I can now refer to the form. So we'll let that pull up. I'm not gonna autofill. So now look how nice this answers the question over technology about how we would handle a concern. So, it, so, so the buyer says, well, we've got to close on that property in Minnesota. So I understand. You know what? Um, I, I think what we ought to do is take a look at the addendum uh, that we have that addresses that issue, right? That's the transition scripting. I think we should take a look at the clause, the addendum, whatever you want to say, that addresses that issue. And then I pull it up and say, this is what we use as subject to the sale of buyer's property. And then you can walk them through it. Since you're already under contract, we have a closing date, you can now address the issue using this as a teaching aid, okay? So I think I would always have dot loop down here in my 
in my docs ready to go along with the MLS, right? Okay, your turn to weigh in. Any questions, thoughts at this point? What do you think? I mean, how many, let me stop sharing for a second. So how many of you um, already feel pretty comfortable that you could do that live with a buyer? Give me a thumbs up if you feel like you can do that pretty well with a buyer already. Okay. Okay, good. So what, com what, what becomes cumbersome to you and what difficulties do you foresee having when you're using Zoom to do your presentations? Uh, weigh that in the chat bar if you can, guys. Is there something that, you know, if you can look, because if you can go from MLS and property and do what Joe says, you know, use mapping, take them on a tour. You say, look, you might even back them and say, this is the airport, right? Or if I'm in Moab, say, look, this is the front part of town. Here's the river. So they go, oh, landmark, I got it. And then you walk them through that over, over Zoom. You're, you're, you're presenting, I think, in the right way from their perspective right? Then when they ask a question about, well, what about this? You know, if they say, well, earnest money, how much down? Then you translate, tr transition over to dot loop and you use the form as a, as a, a teaching mechanism, right? So um, you guys, sorry, I'm in my office. I'm looking for my forms manual, but you know, it's kind of like, well, look, I'm grateful that we started off with the forms manual and, and started teaching as how to use that as a presentation tool, because now, I mean, it's, it's really needed. And it's so easy to grab those documents and pull them into Zoom. Okay, let me get to your, your comments. I asked what might be a challenge, right? Um, yeah, Debbie, Moxie is a cleaner presentation tool so um, for sellers, um, completely agree. And I think next week, what, what I want to do next week is take you through a listing presentation over Zoom. Today, was, today is like, let's handle a buyer who wants to write an offer and, or we're getting to know them and there's some degrees of, of uh, maybe uncertainty and you're finding yourself presenting over Zoom. So that's what the focus of today was. So uh, Debbie, I'll come back to that next week. Uh, Jennifer, um, all the forms, uh, all forms folder. Oh, uh, Jennifer, do you want to weigh in on that? Where are you? I can unmute you. Where are you? Let's see. I got it, Will. You got it? Okay. Go ahead and, and talk more about that, Jennifer. You have um, the mic. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yep. You got Sorry about that. I, I think I was trying to unmute um, with Joe. I don't have my video on because I'm using my two, two screens right now, but um, I was going to let you know that now all of the offices have an all forms folder. So whether you're in the Moab office, Park City, Salt Lake office, um, there's an all forms folder that encompasses all the forms for your office. You can go there and find anything you need. Um, and Dot Loop's working to get that pinned to the top of your um, template folder bar. So it's the first folder that you see, so you don't have to look for it. So um, in my presentation, you know, practice uh, sample dot loop template or loop, um, Jennifer, would I just select that and then it'll all fall over? So it would be best to um, set up a new listing template for your um, practice with your client or a buyer under contract template, um, depending upon what type of client you're working with. And if it's a relocation transaction, you could select the relocation. Okay, you just lost your sound, Jen. Um, whoops. Sorry about that. Okay, go um, ahead. We got you. Okay, so um, you can use either your new listing um, under contract or a relocation contractor listing template with your client, dependent upon who you're working with. Okay, so just to be clear, if I want to have, because I, you know, I, I sure we have our top 10 or top 20 forms that are likely to be referred to, 
but we don't often know where these questions are going to go. I mean, you know, what if we find out that we're doing a short sell yep. or something like that? I mean, would, would they, when I hit that all docs tab, will that just all fall into that loop? No, not every single one because there are hundreds of forms, but in the loop that you're working in, if you're working on a contract with somebody, you'd click add document, click on templates, and then go to that all forms folder and search um, short sale, and then you can copy that form straight into your loop. You can do yeah. all of that in probably under 30 seconds. Okay, and that's what I just did. So we just, we just walked through that. So I did the same process. But hey, guys, I want to be clear about something. There's a difference in using dot loop to, to write your offer. I think that's great. And, and it's, it's what you go to. But think about using that as a way to teach from and present from. I think that is, that's what I'm hoping to get through to, to, to you today. Is when someone has a question that can be answered by the form, it, you're, you're better off showing them the answer on the form than just telling them, because it, it, it starts building a lot more credibility for the compl complexity of our business, you guys. The reality is it's very complicated. I mean, think of what Jennifer just said. There's hundreds of forms, right? So, but they don't understand that. I mean, look at Joe's perspective. They were confused about the MLS. They have no idea how many forms there are. And you become more valuable when you present that way. So this is pre-writing the offer, presentation phase with a buyer, have, have MLS pulled up and take them on the tour of the properties, and, and have your documents ready to go to answer questions. If that's all we did today, we're, we're golden, right? That, that, that's the two main points I wanted to get across today. And, and be prepared, you, you know, we're, we're ha that's why there's all those docs in my, uh, down, in, down in my, uh, in my uh, well, whatever you call that. What do you call that, Joe? My, my doc? My documents are in my, on the doc? That, that's exactly right, on the doc. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Was there, oh, so let me ask you guys this. If the number, well, at least in my mind, the number one thing is property. Two would be the forms. So let's think buyer for a minute. What, what other visuals might you show a buyer that might help them, you know, with a presentation? So what kind of presentation things should we have ready to go? Uh, and hey, hey, Joe. Yeah. Uh, be ready to weigh in on this one. If they're like, think about what could we use in resource center? Okay, let me, home warranty. Good. Cindy, excellent. Um, excellent answer. Waterfalls, hiking near property. Okay. Great. So would you have pictures of that, Linda? You know, would you, would you have pictures ready to go or a map? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So you would point those out because they're, don't assume they know, right? I mean, if the whole, of course, Linda's speaking, like think about Moab here where the, the whole reason to come down there is to enjoy a lot of those things with the family. So they need some perspective, right? That's really good. Title company, inspectors, great. Neighborhoods, uh, Caitlin, very good. Salt Lake, buyer agreement. Um, you know, I would certainly have the due diligence checklist uh, ready to go because a lot of people don't understand what they're going to have to inspect and what this process is going to look like ahead of them, but that's kind of getting back to more forms. Uh, Jill is saying demographics, uh, very good. Uh, that might be like neighborhoods, schools, data like that, uh, even you know, just, just commerce information. Uh, and a lot of that could be done with mapping. Uh, and look, you're the expert, right? So you're going to validate what they already can find on their own online. And, and don't forget to skip over that. And uh, they're going to want to hear that from you. Okay, so uh, do you like the idea of doing listings next week? And we just do a listing presentation over Zoom. I see you're not. Thank you for nodding. <laughs> Good participants. <laughs> okay, and thumbs up. All right, we're learning. Very good. Okay. Just got to remember to go through all the all the pictures. Okay. 
Um, Joe, before I transition off of presenting with Zoom, and uh, anything you want to add? You know, I think one of the things that we sort of covered in the in the last little one is the ability to get comfortable staring at the light, right? So if we have um, practicing looking at your camera as opposed to looking at your screen is important. Um, the interesting thing about that is that it does take practice to develop a sense of, um, well, to feel natural with that, right? Yeah. And so um, you doing that and even practicing to have uh, one of your buddies that is on this uh, training call or maybe a family member and understanding that when you're, when you're speaking to somebody and you want to connect with them, that this is the sort of the framework that you have to work within. At the same time, you know, being able to drop your eyes down and look at the, what's going on with your screen or going back and forth. Uh, those are those are important aspects on the intranet. There is a video called zoom basics and in the basics I tell you the options that I think everyone should have enabled or unabled uh, Disabled if you will checked or unchecked uh, Because zoom has a tendency to want to take over your entire screen and that can be very frustrating for people because you're trying to get to a document or like will you're trying to queue up the next thing you want to present but you can't see it because the zoom window is taking up your whole screen um, so it talks about how to deal with that. Uh, if you want to do some practice, uh, next time you're doing the practice, when you're doing a present share with Zoom, remember you can actually move those toolbars around. You can separate those the, the share screen from the participant screen and, and to make all those things happen. I encourage you doing that because I promise you the way that Zoom will highlight the area of your screen that you're sharing will exactly block the little down arrow or exactly block the little yeah. icon that you're trying to share <laughs> with somebody. And you're like, it's right here. I don't know where it is. And so you got to be able to get fluid with the idea of being able to resize your Zoom windows and get to what it is that, uh, that you're doing. Um, yeah, but I've, I've talked with many of you. I've had many of you reach out to me with email, questions, other things. I love it. Keep it, keep it coming because we're, we are slowly becoming the dominant force in this state because we have the best agents, we have the best technology, and when the best agents use the best technology in the best way, that's three bests. You can't beat three bests. <laughs> I agree. No, I think, uh, I think there's a lot of momentum going like uh, in that direction right now. Uh, you can tell that we're, we're getting a little better at it, aren't we? Think about the first meetings we've had, Joe, um, where, yeah. 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 And the other, oh yeah, that's a good point. Um, what we call Zoom protocol now, right? I mean, in a typical conversation, uh, your ear can hear and your face can read the cues and so you can kind of know when someone's done talking so you can insert your comment and go back and forth um, and now on the like the zoom protocol is a little bit more basic you kind of have to wait right it's like um, if you if you choose to watch the news nowadays everyone that does an interview they're all they're all remote right so the the interviewer tends to ask a question and then there's what seems to be an awkward pause as a viewer right while you're waiting for the person on the other end to hear the question completely and then begin the response. Keep in mind that will probably happen on some of your Zoom meetings as well. You'll, you'll want to, to ask a question and it, be okay with that one or two beat pause while someone else is hearing it because they might not have a faster internet connection than you do. They might have some other things where it's a little bit delayed. And so, so those are all parts of this uh, that are affecting how we relate to each other in this virtual way. Very good. Uh, thanks, Joe. Appreciate all that. Um, do you think that we're going to get people asking us right now, how's the market? And we're going to be on Zoom when they ask us? So where would we go to answer that question? What would you show them? Market stats? And where would you find the market stats? And, you know, it does take... I, I guess I'm, I'm reminded of something and I'm just using this. Thanks for the weighing in you guys. Um, <laughs> you would show them Jake Breen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hold for a second while I call Jake. He's a friend of mine. I'm sure he'd answer that question. Um, that's funny. Thanks for keeping it light, Trish. Um, you're, you know, I've taught a lot of new agents in, in my life. Um, and it seems like there's a tool that we need. We know of the tool, but if we've not used it, if we're not practiced with it, we won't pick it up. 
You know, you're just not. You're because you're afraid if something goes wrong. So you won't use Zoom as a presentation tool until you've practiced using it, period. You just won't. And you won't teach from the forms, right? You won't use them as a teaching aid unless you're practiced with them. So you just won't, you won't go there because you'll feel lost. You won't be able to find where those key sentences are or the key section is, so you won't go there. So this is very much like that. I think we just have to simply practice. I, I don't think the tool has been difficult really to pick up and use. Uh, remember that your buyer and seller, this is now standard for them in their jobs. They're on Zoom meetings all the time and their family's on Zoom meetings all the time. So they've changed along with us. You, you know, we're, we're not the only ones going through this experience. Um, okay, we're almost out of time. We got 10 more minutes left. Um, and, and all I was doing is saying, if you're comfortable, you know, in going, let's see, so screen share. If you're comfortable in knowing where, um, where the stats are, then, then I think that you would go there. And just like Joe said, see, you got to practice this because somewhere on my computer is Utah real estate and I can't seem to find it. Did I log out? Maybe I did. All right. Well, I won't log back in um, and waste the time doing that. But you guys, um, on sales meeting, you know how we went through all the, uh, all the, um, sorry, back to, back to share. Um, remember how we went through all the graphs and we showed the trends and all of that? That's right on the front page now. I, I, would, I would use that and, and the Park CMLS is a little different, but just have that ready so you're ready to go when answering some very common questions like how's the market? Well, here, let me show you how it's performing performing uh, remarkably well, actually. Um, and, and Kim has the, uh, has the link already pulled up. And thank you for that, by the way, because that gave me the shortcut. Uh, I'll go back to my screen then. So um, there's our active inventory, um, and we've talked about how we're just uh, barely lower. And so, you know, traditionally, when you start to see real estate markets having a hard time, you see an oversupply and, and, and a, um, a low demand. So think of this is, this is the entire MLS, just by the way. This is the Wasatch Front for those on Park City from Park City, just th this is just the WFR and it's everything, okay? But we're not seeing that. We're actually seeing a, a lower trend in inventory, which is gonna drive the demand is, is still, ratio wise is still there. So, cause look at our under contracts. So think about those two pieces of data. The under contracts is rising back up, which is just slightly lower uh, than last year, but our inventory, come back up here, our inventory is down. So what's that saying about appreciation? What is that saying about real estate? Sorry, I looked at the wrong screen. Don't do that. <laughs> what does that say about uh, appreciation right now? What does that say to a buyer about what kind of offer they should make? You know, are we going to see a depreciation in property? Not likely at all. Now, that's not every market, guys. This is, you know, so you got to be smart about different price points and, and things like that. But that, that's a two really key pieces of information that could be answered. And you're going to do this over Zoom and you're going to go to the, your the MLS and you're going to show them this. Um, remember that there's pent up demand in this graph here, this off market. This is friendly shadow inventory, friendly shadow inventory. And so what I might do as a presenter is I would stamp it like this. I'd go see. These are all friendly, happy. See, we love all of this inventory that's gonna come on the market soon because look at all of these houses that could be matches for you. That'd be kind of fun. And that's up in the annotate, um, in the annotate 
uh, section uh, in your presenter toolbox, okay? Okay, well, that was kind of fun. Well, look, I'm having a ball, you guys. So, yes. Do you know how hard this crowd is? You, you think you're funny and then it's crickets. <laughs> like, this is a tough crowd. So look, my, Tammy says this morning, I go, you know the hardest thing about Zoom is that you try to be funny, but nobody laughs, right? And she goes, well, that's okay, because you're, you're always laughing at your own jokes anyway. <laughs> I said, okay. I, was, I go, so what you're saying, honey, is I was made for this. Is that right? Thanks, Jonathan, for the hand clap. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, uh, a couple more thoughts in the outgo, and then if anybody wants to, uh, to chime in, happy to hear from you. Um, the, okay, so the challenge for today is to make sure you're practicing. Um, I'm not sure what I can do to help you guys buddy up. I, that, that's probably on you. Uh, but I'd love, uh, some accountability to this that maybe you could email me and say you practiced. I, you got to do this a number of different times. Uh, usually better to have somebody, you know, obviously not in the same room. So, uh, which is probably not going on much anyway. But uh, I think all of us are candidates to team up with each other and practice this a few times. Practice going um, from, from system to system. So go from uh, dot loop and look at a form and then go back to the MLS and then answer a stat. How about this? What if I sent you three questions in three different areas and you practice answering them over Zoom? And I'll play a hypothetical buyer if we were in a coaching class, I would say, okay, uh, Greg Call, you're the buyer. Here are your three questions. You wanna know how's the market doing? And then you wanna know about a property on Lambert Avenue. And then you're concerned about inspections, something like that. So look, I'd go stats, the property, and then I'd go to dot loop, right? And I, I could use a form to answer those questions, right? So maybe I'll give you those, and then you guys can practice, practice using those. Okay. Um, oh, uh, Elizabeth, you and I are up. We were going to talk about something. This is our parting thought. Are you on the call still, Elizabeth? Yes, you are. Let me unmute you. Elizabeth, hi. Hey. For a second, I thought, oh, no, you're traveling somewhere, and you're really where, where, where is that? Uh, where you, that is in from? Oregon. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. At the, uh, at the, um, what do you call it? It's a park in Oregon. Yeah. Okay, so you called me and asked me a question. I, I thought we could share the dialogue. We yeah, had. absolutely. Yeah, so, um. What I asked, uh, well, guys, because uh, I had a client who asked me not about just the property. He asked me if I could educate and advise him in, in his real estate ideas of buying more properties, several properties, and he didn't know what to do. And so I asked him, so are you looking for a forever agent, it looks like. It's like, yeah, pretty much. And I just froze. I didn't know what to say. And so I hung up the call with him and called Will. And, you know, he shared with me, and I think that you probably should share, Will, what you said. Well, uh, yeah. So Elizabeth calls, and you could, and look, to, if you don't, if you guys don't know Elizabeth, she's driven uh, to be the best at what she's doing, okay? And in other parts of her business career in the past, she's done just that. So now this is newer for her, but I think it speaks to everybody, whether you're a, a, a veteran on this call or whether you're new or, or anything in between. Um, think about the role of the realtor, a, a high level professional realtor should be really good at connecting through a conduit system, uh, metaphorically, to all the resources that our clients need because nobody has all the answers. 
So it's not possible to have every legal answer, every ethics rule, uh, contract issue, marketing, technology, um, statistics, e economics, financing, underwriting guidelines. I mean, I could go on and on, right? Think about how big this thing is. But a good agent is going to be a connection. And, and if you looked, I think I was trying to say, Elizabeth, look at the leadership team first it, when you need help. And you can connect there. And I think that a lot of your answers can be found. No one should feel like that they have to have the answer to every question. Matter of fact, it takes great, in, uh, it's great intellect um, and confidence come from asking questions and reaching out. Uh, and I think, you know, men are kind of famous for not wanting to ask for directions. <laughs> it's a gender flaw that, that it, I, I recognize it. I don't know how many times Tammy says, well, why don't you just go ask for directions? I said, honey, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. I don't know why. But, you know, I probably should, right? I probably would be better off if I would just ask for directions. And, and in this case, when we're asking for help, it doesn't show a sign of weakness. It actually shows a, a sign of confidence. And you should be confident in your team and the resources around you. And that's what I was trying to explain to Elizabeth. And she's not alone. She doesn't have to be the expert in everything and all facets of this business. And I think whether I'm looking at Chuck or whether I'm looking at Steve Chen and, some of, uh, and Jim uh, on this, Rich, I could go on and on about the veterans that we have on this call, that they've learned that. that they, they really become really good at being that conduit between those who have the right answer and, and asking questions with confidence. So I hope that that builds your confidence and your ability to be a better, you know, producing agent and a professional agent with those, uh, your clients that you, I know you guys love. Be a good conduit to them and connect them. Uh, I'll give you a little tip on what's coming up. We're trying to address a, an earnest money deposit with seller's brokerage. I'll repeat that. We're dealing with the issue of, of depositing earnest money into the seller's brokerage. Uh, to we've had a lot of problems with uh, earnest monies held up at title companies because the buyer refuses to release the funds uh, even though the repsy is clearly in the favor of the seller and it's clearly it should have been released so we're dealing with that issue right now uh, drafting an internal document to fix the problem and there's always moving targets in the legal and law and ethics and the forms issues of this business and there's always moving targets with technologies and platforms and things like that. So, you know, be good at connecting the conduit to the resources that you need. Um, guys, that concludes uh, the session. I think, you know, we hit our hour. I want to remind you all that you're amazing. At, you're doing great. I love you all. I root, I root for you all the time. Keep it up. Uh, it's incredible how well we're doing with this. Uh, in, in this uh, COVID world that we have right now. Remember to take inventory of all the things that are going well because so many things are, okay? And I will see you next time. There's more trainings coming up tomorrow and I think Friday and I'll see you next week. And go out there and enjoy this beautiful weather that God has sent us to remind us how beautiful life is. So we'll, we could thank him by participating in the weather today, right? Anyway, love you guys. I'll see you next time, okay? Thanks for the feedback, too. I really appreciate it, you guys. Thanks so much. I hope that was worth your time.